1606, a small, unremarkable ship named Doifka, meaning Little Dove, carried the first Europeans ever to visit a strange land completely unknown to the West. The ship's captain had missed a 90-mile-wide strait separating this land from New Guinea, and so assumed he had found a southern extension of that island. He didn't know it, but the land he had bumped into was in fact an entire continent, long conjectured but never seen by European eyes. In the early 1600s, the Dutch East India Company was in an ongoing struggle with the Portuguese for control of the Maluku Islands, then known as the Spice Islands for the nutmeg, mace and cloves found there. A hugely profitable resource the new European corporate powers sought to extract from them. In 1605, the Doifka under Captain Willem Janzon had been part of the fleet that recaptured the fort of Van Ver from the Portuguese on the island of Ambon. Ambon was the headquarters of the Dutch in the Indies, and once the fort was taken, the commander of the fleet, Stephen van der Hagen, placed Doifka at the disposal of the governor of Ambon, before taking the rest of his fleet back to the Netherlands. The governor, Frederick de Hootman, ordered Janzon to take Doifka and search for new trade opportunities in the Great Land of New Guinea and other East and South lands. But before the journey could begin, Doifka urgently needed provisions, so she sailed back to Bantam in Java before setting out on her voyage of discovery. Janssen headed east, passing through the Banda Islands, then the Kay Islands, and along the south coast of New Guinea. He then skirted round the dangerously shallow waters at the western point of Jos Sudarso Island, then known as False Cape, and struck out east-southeast. On the 26th of February 1606, Doifka made landfall at the mouth of a river, later named by colonists the Pennyfather, on a peninsula they would eventually call Cape York, in the northernmost part of a long inhabited continent that would eventually become known to the Europeans engaged in colonizing it as Australia. The Wickmunken people, whom the crew of the Doifka encountered soon after disembarking, record that although initial contact was cordial, violence soon broke out as the Dutch attempted to kidnap women and children. The Dutch East India Company had issued orders that native adults and children should be captured so that their indigenous languages could be learnt, and later used to establish trade connections. The Wickmunken also record that the Dutch raped their women and forced their men to hunt for them. Nine of Janzon's 20-strong crew were killed, and they shot and killed an unknown number of people before taking ship and fleeing from the place they named Cape Kievir, or Cape Turnabout. Janzon later reported that the lands they had found were, for the greater part uncultivated, and certain parts inhabited by savage, cruel, black barbarians who slew some of our sailors, so that no information was obtained regarding the commodities obtainable and in demand there. Janssen took the Doifken north, charting about 200 miles of the coast before sailing back to Bantam via the south coast of New Guinea. He returned to the Netherlands believing that the lands along which he had sailed were joined to New Guinea, although his own chart did not confirm this, and this mistaken belief was reproduced in many maps until James Cook's first voyage of 1770, when he charted the Torres Strait. Ironically, it has since been discovered that the first people to inhabit the continent that the Doifka bumped into in 1606 likely walked from New Guinea to continental Australia at a time when they were indeed contiguous landmasses, 65,000 years before Europeans ever arrived there. <laughs>